Hey, what's happening everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here. Welcome back to a new playthrough of sorts. Seven Days to Die, except we're doing Seven Days to Die Alpha, uh, Alpha 17. Let's gonna call this Alpha 17 edition. <laughs> it's hard to believe that we are finally at Alpha 17. Alpha 17 has been in the works for over a year. And what we're going to see is the result of all that labor. Now, the thing with Seven Days to Die is there are a gazillions of systems in it. And we're not going to see, it's not, it's the changes appear very subtle on the surface, but there's a lot going on underneath. So hopefully we'll explore a bunch of them and uh, hopefully we won't get chewed up by zombies a lot. Now you can see that the menu screen is a little bit different. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new game here. Uh, we'll just call this, uh, this is my last game, The Walking Chump. Well, we'll figure out another name in just a bit. You can see here we have a game world. I don't really understand what this is. Um, I guess we'll do New Random World. Maybe these, you can see we have these territory names and stuff. I have no idea. Okay, about my settings. You'll see that we have the server visibility. So I can choose this to be public. And I guess I can choose players and people can connect onto it. We're not going to make this a public server at all. So we're just going to have this not listed. For other options, I'm sending the zombies to not run. And the reason for that is I don't enjoy nighttime. Typically in nighttime, I'm hunkered down in my base waiting for daytime. So in this playthrough, we're just gonna be going out during the morning, night, and afternoon, and every and every place in between. So I don't want night to be a barrier. And what else we have over here? Loot respawn time, disabling this. Once we loot something, it's looted. We're not gonna be able to get that again. We're gonna have to explore to get more loot. I set down the, the enemies to 32 on the blood moon count. This may be a little too high. We'll see how it performs. And I've disabled airdrops because I find them actually ver very annoying. And uh, we have multiplayer, but we're not gonna work on those here. So I'm gonna set up this name. We're gonna, we're gonna generate this world and uh, let's get going. All right, we are we are starting up. Now you can see we got the, the basics of survival. If you haven't seen this before, it says, Dear friend, the wasteland can be an unforgiving place and you look like you could use some help. Enclosed is a short guide to help you survive. If you complete it, we might take you in as a new citizen. The White River Settlement is real and it's safe. It's actually not real, if you're wondering. <laughs> and this basically is your tutorial quest. Basic survival is your active quest. The quest status is displayed on the objective tracker in the top right of the screen. For more information on quests, ask, <laughs> I can't speak today, access your inventory and navigate to the quest menu. So essentially what this does is it allows you, it's it's basically an on-ramp to learning the systems of Seven Days to Die. Now, I have played this game a whole lot, so I am pretty familiar with all the systems, but we'll walk through. <laughs> well, what is this? <laughs> okay, guys. Ah! <laughs> All right, welcome to Alpha 17. I, I see nothing wrong with this game. I think it's perfect. Now, one thing about the old releases is that they used to uh, wait to spawn in zombies, and that way you could get your bearings before the houses started melting. But evidently, that has changed. The zombies now appear. So, one of my old suggestions <laughs> was to uh, to basically not move around too much and, and gear up. All right, so we're going to start off. We're going to get some feathers. By searching those, that, this on the ground here is a bird nest. We get feathers, which we can use to create arrows, which we can shoot the zombies in the face. So we want to look for as many birds' nests as possible. We also want to pick up these small stones here. These are what we... They're the building blocks of all of our tools. Now, this winter biome is great for finding stuff just because it's so clear. You can see it very easily, but you will typically get very cold in this place. I don't know how it's going to work with this new alpha, so we'll see. I can't believe that building was just melting. <laughs> Good times! All right. Now, the eggs are pretty useful. You can, all, you can cook them. You can eat them raw. Because as you know, this is a survival game. Well, if you didn't know, well, guess what? It's a survival game. This looks like blueberries. So we get blueberries by punching them. <laughs> <laughs> seems seems natural enough. Sometimes we get angry at blueberries. You got to take out the frustration on them. All right. So we're just picking up these things. What we can do now is we need to build a stone axe. So I'm going to come up to something. I can start punching this tree. But I'd rather hit these little guys here. You can see we get three wood. And that time we got four wood. So saves us from 
breaking our hand on a, a, a on a tree. We're getting lots of feathers. All right, now here's our inventory. You can see this is actually new in Alpha 17. Essentially, we can fill this up, but the more we fill it up, the slower we'll go. So it's kind of like this risk reward sort of thing. I'm actually not a fan of it. That's like if I if I was to mod this game, this is the first thing I'd remove because this game is such a heavy, it's so heavily focused on loot. All right, stone axe, we can't build this yet. We need plant fibers. So we can just punch the grass. You gotta punch something. Why do these games always start out with you punching stuff? I mean, I don't mind it, but you know, it, it's it seems like it's all the same on ramp. All right, punching the ground. Now in the old days, you used to be able to punch the grass and you would get grass strands. And then you had to craft them into plant fibers. But these days now we just automatically get plant fibers. All right, so we got all that, we can get our ax. Now, if you're a regular Seven Days to Die player, one thing you'll notice is that we get a number one. That's a little bit different. Previously, we used to uh, start out at 25, and the number would indicate basically the quality of the, the item. You go up to 25, 50, 75, 100. Now the numbers start at one. And essentially, every time you repaired your item, they would decrease in value, but that's no longer the case. You can just keep on, or at least with the stone axes. I don't know about the others. All right, we, we are getting tons of arrows. All right, so we have our feathers. Now we need to get some... <laughs> you know, guys, I think you, I think this, this alpha still needs to cook a little bit. <laughs> I, I feel like a magician. <laughs> Ooh. Now, I bet as soon as you update one block here, kind of like Minecraft-esque, this whole thing will just start to melt. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's watch. Here we go. There it goes. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how you do demolition. Uh, what is this? 2018 style. <laughs> All right, let's just hit this guy here. All right, I'm, I'm going to be wailing on this rock a bit. Now you can see in the lower left-hand corner, we have my stamina. I I personally hate stamina in games. I, I just think it's it's kind of like a timeout, basically. So here I am waiting, waiting. There used to be a wellness system related. I believe it was health and stamina. I, for, I forget it now. It's gone. I completely forgot about it. But I hated it, and they got rid of it. So, yay. All right. You can see we're at 37 stone. We want to get a lot more stone. Now, one thing we're getting with the stone as we're, we're hitting it, we're getting this raw iron. And we can use that raw iron to actually make regular scrap iron. And we can take that scrap iron and use it to make weapons. So that's a good thing. All right, my axe just uh, just ran out. So what I'm going to do is simply repair it. Uh, previously, I would simply just scrap it and get, make myself a new axe. But now you can see I have full durability and everything. I don't have to worry about doing that stuff. All right, something just happened. <laughs> All right, stop being creepy, game. Okay, so we have 90 arrows. We have 90 rocks. So what we can do is start making arrows. So we can look up here, stone arrow. We're going to be making a lot of these. So, oops. <laughs> I'm such a noob. We're going to click favorite. There we go. Because we're going to be making all the... Wait, what am I missing here? Oh, I'm missing wood. All right, so let's craft these. And uh, let's start hitting tree stumps. It was kind of interesting. I got honey out of that tree stump. That sounds like it's going to make honey uh, tree stumps a little valuable. Now, what's kind of interesting also about this game is one of the first consistent series I did on this channel. Well, the first one I did was a Minecraft series. <laughs> I swear, officer, I had nothing to do with it. Oh, my God. That guy was going to the bathroom. <laughs> so this was one of my first consistent series i did i made about 40 episodes it was alpha maybe it was alpha 10 or alpha 11 and uh, i was just getting to know everything and um it was like a successful successful series it had to end unfortunately because they released another alpha and uh, previously when they released an alpha you couldn't use your map they basically they, you had to restart your world every single time. I don't believe that's the case anymore, but, you know, typically people just restart maps anyway to take take advantage of the new map generation features and so forth. 
There we go. Now we got our arrows. We can make all the arrows we want. Excellent. And we get more feathers. I wonder if I have the loot abundance up. I didn't see that. But that's something I'll have to check. I do love how I can just repair things. I think that's nice. All right, so we got this guy's attention. Now, one thing with the stamina system, it, it makes combat a little more dicier. Also, zombies will will make you bleed much easier. So it's pretty, pretty uh, important for you to have bandages on you. And one place to get bandages is through cotton plants. And that's what we'll be doing, is getting our cotton and, and basically stocking up on bandages. I was playing earlier with this, and I just kept on bleeding out every single time. It's really... Previously, you would bleed with a zombie hit you maybe one time out of six or seven. Now it's like one out of two or three. So it's kind of serious. Okay, my arrows are coming along here. I got 48. I'm going to stop production now. Get my axe here. And what next thing I'm going to do is make some rags or a cloth fragment. So let's make a bunch of these. These are what we can use to make our bandages. Let's see if we can find some more loot. What I want to do is find a place to call home. At least a temporary home. I mean, ultimately, we'll create some bases and play around. One thing is I do not like is being in this winter biome. You can see here, this is this is not fun. I do not like winter biomes at all. <laughs> I mean, and it's like, it's not just Seven Days to Die, it's any sort of survival game. Essentially, you're just kind of being cold, there's ice everywhere, I don't know. I just don't like them. Alright, so it looks like the stumps give you honey. Now, I'm not too sure if they've changed how honey operates, but in previous alphas, honey is essentially, it clears you of disease. So if you get infected by a zombie then honey will remove that infection. If you don't remove the infection, you will become a zombie yourself. <laughs> and by the way, becoming a zombie means you lose the game. All right, let's make some more, or you just die. Continue making arrows. Actually, let's stop this. Let's make our bow instead. So we have our wooden bow. In previous alphas, you could easily make a crossbow as a starting weapon. It just took some grass and some twigs, and you had one of the best games. Uh, the best games. The best, one of the best weapons in the game. It was phenomenal. And within, I think it was Alpha 11, they they took the um, crossbow and they made it a higher tier weapon. It made sense, but man, I was bummed. All right, I'm going to find a place that has some you know i gotta put some clothes on too if you look at my player profile you can see uh i am uh rasta la pasta that's my name all right <laughs> i don't want to take clothes from a zombie i mean it, it, you gotta take clothes from a zombie i mean yeah i mean that's obvious we, we're gonna do it at some point but uh, who wants to do it i mean they're crunchy pants who wants to wear crunchy pants at least who wants to wear strangers crunchy pants all right, we got our bow here. Let's lock and load. I'm going to get rid of this land claim block here. And what I'm going to do also is get back to our arrow making. One thing I do love about this game is that you can craft on the go. You can craft while climbing a ladder. Uh-oh. This looks like a sleeper zombie. A sleeper zombie are zombies who just kind of sleep until you get close to them. And if you shoot them in the head, they wake up. And this is a, this is a tougher zombie. New in this alpha, arrows stick to them. This is pretty nice. Otherwise, they explode. So if you're low on arrows, you can just run up and pull the arrow out and shoot him with it. Oh, he loves this. Explodey arrows. If you play um, Dead by Daylight, there's a perk called Spirit, uh, Spirit Fury, where a pallet will explode if a person has that perk. And that's what this reminds me of. Now, one thing uh, that's very disappointing is there's... <laughs> we got the butt zombie! Look at his big butt! <laughs> uh, there's no looting. There's... Oh, dude, I'm in the middle of something. All right, these guys are some of the hardest zombies, so we're going to keep on moving. Uh, you don't get loot from zombies anymore. 
essentially, the bodies of zombies have been taking up too much processing time when they're on the ground, so the developers just figured, you know, let's just get rid of them. I think. So there's no loot. I, or they acted like containers, essentially. And they changed the bodies to be... Uh, look at this idiot. <laughs> is that is that vulture drunk? <laughs> we got a drunk vulture. All right, we gotta we gotta stay away. These guys, the vultures do not play around. They're, they're like they're like little drones. I gotta get out of this place. You can see in the lower left hand corner that my uh, my I have a little jacket showing. I'm guessing that indicates that I'm clo like I'm cold. I mean, why would I be cold? I'm just running around in a pair of boxers. <laughs> there we go. We're back in the back in the warm lands. This biome generation is just weird. Now they've made lots of tweaks. It's obviously the biomes bleed into each other now. They're not so they're not so rigid. Maybe that they're running some kind of noise on the biomes, but it's just kind of weird to be in this like nice, happy forest surrounded by snowy lands. And we're back to the snow. <laughs> it's like it's snowed all the way around here. This is like an island of no snow. All right, we're still we're still looking for the promised land, everyone. Now you'll notice in my lower left-hand corner, I have a guy basically looking like he's carrying a lot of things. Uh, that means I'm going over my weight here. You can see this this one piece of duct tape is really really uh, dragging me down. Well, let's put this on my toolbar and let's see if that affects anything. Uh, it doesn't look like it did. So that means I'm being slowed down by my encumbrance. I'm I'm guessing I'm just carrying too much stuff. Again, survive. Like I, I don't want to micromanage like what I have to carry. Now, obviously, as I level up in the game, I'm going to. Oh, I thought that was a rabbit. As I level up in the game, I will be able to carry more and more things. Why am I going north? So hopefully, we'll see that in this playthrough. But right now, it's not really enjoyable. Okay, if we look at the map here, you can see exactly where I'm going. Look at this snow. My god, the snow goes on forever. Now, the other thing I'm concerned about with the carrying system is just the amount of, um, like, I don't think it takes into account what you're carrying. So you could be carrying, let's say, all really tiny items like oak seeds, and your encumbrance would be going off the charts. Here, let's move this down. Look at that. Perfect. So it, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, it's basically penalizing you for the amount of things that you're carrying, not the weight of the things you're carrying. I don't know. Like I said, if I was modding the game, that's the first thing I'd get rid of. Okay, we just made some ladders. We're going to ladder up here. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to destroy our ladders. Uh, zombies seem to be really good now. They can figure out where where you are. I was on a roof earlier in one of my playthroughs, and they just think they, they knew exactly where to go. Uh-oh. <laughs> Almost had a one-way ticket to zombie town. We're going to break this off for now. And uh, you know what? I, I even don't feel safe like there, but... You know, whatevs. You, you gotta live with some danger. Alright, let's add some more ladders up here. There we go. Look at this. This kind of makes me feel nice and safe. And of course, the last thing we have to do is build ourselves a bedroll. Now, the bedroll is your spawn point. So when you craft it, you place it, and you die, then basically you'll spawn wherever this is. If you lose your bedroll, you spawn randomly, which is not fun. 
All right, we're going to drop this right here. There we go. Oh, my God. I got a floating bedroll. <laughs> uh, it's perfect, guys. This game's great. <laughs> okay, then. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll start building our base and basically doing a lot of looting and exploring a lot of the Alpha 17 systems. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. That goes a long way to let me know how you're feeling and whether you guys want to see more of this type of content. And of course, make sure to let me know how you're feeling in the comments. I would certainly love to hear you. All right, guys, that's been... All right, guys, it's been a great time. I will see you in the next video. See you then.